Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of View on Fire. My name is David Bixenmeister and today we are going to learn about the new View CLI 3, how to set up a Firebase project and how to deploy our Vue.js app to Firebase hosting. So before we can install the new Vue CLI, we need to remove the old CLI. And we can do that by typing in yarn global remove view minus CLI. If we have done that, we can install the new view CLI 3. And we're also going to install the Firebase tools right away because we're going to need them later on. So this process is going to take a couple of seconds. And during that, I also want to draw attention to the changed namespace. So for the view CLI, the namespace has changed from view minus CLI to add view slash CLI. So that's the new namespace for the view CLI from now on. So now that the new CLI is installed, we're going to take a look at the new comments it has available. If you've used the old CLI, you probably also have used the init comment to create new view projects based on existing templates. And while this comment is still available, it's now part of the legacy API. The new comment to spin up new view projects is the create comment, which is powered by the new view CLI service. And the new CLI helps you scaffold your new projects. It's built on top of Webpack and you can extend it with plugins. So instead of being dependent on templates and the developer of the templates, it lets you now interactively decide which plugins you want to use and which one you want to leave out. Another very cool thing is the add comment, which also lets you add plugins to already existing view projects, or it lets you add plugins during development, so you don't need to know all the plugins you want to use upfront. So let's just create a new view app with the create comment. We just type in view create and the name of the app which we just call view minus app for simplicity. As next step, we're being asked if we want to use an existing preset, like for example, the default one, or if we want to manually select our features. To get a feeling for the new CLI, we will go for the manual option. So for this project, we're going to use Babel, the router, Vuex, a CSS preprocessor, and the linter. I'll pick SAS as CSS preprocessor. I use the aslint standard config. I want to lint it on save and I want to have my config files in dedicated config files. I can also uh, save this preset for future projects, but I'm just gonna skip this for now. Once that is done, we can cd into the view minus app directory and use yarn serve to spin up a local development server. The dev server is then accessible on localhost through port 8080. So we just click the link and can see a view example page with some links to the view documentation the installed CLI plugins, and some other essential links. If you take a look at the top of the page, we see a small navigation. So we have the home page and an about page, which just has a placeholder text. Next, we will take a quick look at the code structure. So all important files can be found in the source folder. We have the main.js file as our main entry point to the view application, where we create the view object, inject plugins like the router or the store to the view object, and define the main component app.view. In the router.js file, we define our routes and the components which should be loaded. So you can see here the two components or views are imported, the home view and the about view. Then we have the store.js file, which holds the Vuex store, and at this point is still pretty much empty. The app.view is the main component for our application. You can see here a very minimalistic navigation with two links, one to the home page and the other one to the about page. All views are going to be rendered in this router minus view tag. So let's take a look into the views and component structure. Our views can be found in the views directory. Here we have the about view, which is a very simple view with just an h1 tag. And then we have the home view, which has a logo and is using another component, the hello world component. Components can be found in a components directory. If we open up this hello world component, we can see the HTML with all the view documentation links we've just seen earlier. So now that we know the basic structure of a view app, we want to deploy our application to Firebase hosting as a next step. For that, we open our browser, type in console.firebase.google.com, and we create a new Firebase project. So first we enter our project name, in our case, that's view minus app. We will receive a unique project ID. Then we need to select our analytics and billing region. In my case, that's uh, Austria. 
We don't want to use any other Google services for now and just click continue and here create project. And then we wait until our project is ready. Okay, so it's now finishing up and it's ready. So we are being redirected to the dashboard and here we can choose the option to add Firebase to our web app. We copy this config code snippet and head over to our console again. So we can stop the dev server for now and we will install the Firebase SDK via Yarn. Since we are using Firebase for the first time, we need to connect our Google account to the Firebase tools first. So once it's installed, we just need to type Firebase login to connect our Google account to the Firebase tools. Just gonna say no here and we click this authentication link, it opens a browser and we're just gonna accept all the permissions. Once that is done, the connection is successful, so we can head back to our console and we're going to initialize our Firebase project. For now, we're just going to use the hosting functionality of Firebase. We're going to select the project, we're going to create it earlier through the web interface, and we want to deploy our disk directory afterwards. We say no here for now, and the Firebase project is initialized. So next we're going to head over to our code editor again and we're going to create a new file called firebaseapp.js in our source folder. Here we're just going to import Firebase and then we paste the config we've copied earlier from the web interface to this file. We're just going to change this var keyword to const and we're going to save the initialized app in a variable called Firebase app. And last we're just going to export our Firebase app. And then there's one more thing we want to change here. So as you can see, we have all the Firebase specific project data directly within our code, like the API key or the project ID. And if in the future we want to have different environments, like a production environment and a development environment, we definitely don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a .env file in our root folder, and we're going to create two entries here. One for the Firebase project ID, and another one for the Firebase API key. So we're just gonna copy our project ID from the Firebase app.js, paste it to our .env file, and we're gonna do the same for the Firebase API key. So we're just gonna copy it here again and paste it to that .env file and save it. So first we're going to remove this messaging sender ID because we don't going to need it. And then we're going to replace the API key with our environment variable, which you can call through process.env and the key we have defined in our .env file. And we're going to do the same for every time we're going to use the project ID. So first in, we're going to use it in the auth domain but also in the database URL. Then the project ID itself. And last but not least, the storage bucket. We're gonna replace the Firebase project ID. Next, we log our config to the console so we can check if everything works correctly. So as last step, we want to initialize our Firebase app when the Vue.js app is starting. So we're going to go to our main.js file and import the Firebase app.js file right here. So this way we can make sure that when the Vue app is loaded, that the Firebase app is initialized. As next step, we're going to go to our console again and spin up our local development server again with Yansurf. Then we're going to head over to our browser and check the console. And here we can see that we have our correct API key and the project ID injected into our view app. We also have one more warning over here, which we also want to get rid of. So let's go back to the code editor, to the Firebase app. And here, instead of importing from Firebase, we're going to import from Firebase slash app. 
that should do the trick for now. So let's check in the browser and yeah, the warning is gone. So that's perfect. So now as a next step, we wanna deploy this view app to Firebase hosting. So we're gonna stop our local server again and we're gonna build our app for production with yarn build. If we've done that, we can just use the Firebase deploy command and it's uploading our disk directory, so our build Vue.js app to Firebase hosting. And once that is done, we can go back to our browser to the Firebase web interface. We're gonna close that. And now we just switch to a hosting tab. So we can see here our recent deploy. We can see that we have eight files uploaded to Firebase hosting, which is our view app. And we also got a URL from Firebase where our view app is hosted. So if we just click that, we can see our view app is fully functional. It's now online and hosted on Firebase. That's it for now. Please leave a like, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of View on Fire. Thanks for watching and see you soon on this channel.